What are you wearing? My emotions, darling! Stress couture! These fillies are unicorns one moment, pegasi the next. Most of Twilight's friendship lesson is off-screen, because her lessons are just too good for us humans to comprehend, apparently. Friendship isn't always easy, but there's no doubt it's worth fighting for. That's what they were doing! Fighting! You're sending mixed signals, Twilight. Do we fight or not? Hmm, that sounds familiar. How many levels of self-referential meta can we go? Twilight realizes her own lessons are starting to repeat themselves in an episode about developing an unexpected fandom which criticizes them for repeating themselves, aka Seasonal Rot the episode. Sweet Celestia, Twilight, what did you do to this book? It was fine the last time we saw it, and we know it wasn't in Golden Oak due to the lack of burns and having seen it safely in the old castle. This book abuse is so unbecoming of Book Horse. Don't judge a book by its cover. Twilight was so eager to use that famous book-related line that she accuses Starlight of judging when really she was just inquiring to learn more. Friendship isn't always easy, but there's no doubt it's worth fighting for. Twilight quotes this line from the beginning of season two, but the first journal entry wasn't until season four. Look at those misfortunate peasants riding the train. Twilight here gets to ride in her own personal hot air balloon by leveraging her horse fame. This seems like a very inefficient way to meet. How long does it take for every pony to assemble? At least the map was smart enough to use magical pagers. I've got a surprise for you. What is it, Twilight? Do I need to prepare myself? Who hurt you, Fluttershy? Why does she have PTSD from whatever Twilight's last surprise was? Twily Kane predates the book and has no reason to be in here. We know Discord had some time with the journal, but that just raises questions about whether or not making a copy for distribution was a good idea. Speaking of journal inconsistencies, most of the entries are not even in chronological order, suggesting they skipped around randomly and left blank pages on purpose. Hooves appear to stick on the surface of a page to turn it, which certainly complicates existing cartoon hoof lore, unless you subscribe to the suction cup theory. This was the moment the false advertising class action lawsuit really gained steam, because the actual book does not in fact shoot confetti or contain free apples. You wouldn't download a journal. But seriously, a duplication spell which could be used for solving all sorts of problems, but isn't because then an episode couldn't happen, is right up there with the time Twilight changed their species out of nowhere. If only Starlight thought to use her spell during the crystalling. That book had a hole in it, but at least the pages weren't melting. Amazing! A perfect copy! No, Applejack, these aren't perfect copies. If they were perfect copies, they'd be as tattered and as torn as the original. No, these are AI upscales. Unicorns are still OP. Sandwich! Party cannon! Oh, birth anniversary! Pinky's journal entries are nothing more than random word associations. My idea. How would you girls feel about making our journal available for every pony? Our stories are so marketable that we could make tons of money. Maybe we'll even get a TV show someday. But remember, only the royals get the royalties. Pegasus Apple Vendor raises many questions. Is this Applejack's competition, or is this merely a distributor for the Earth ponies to reach the Cloudsdale market? Either way, it's cultural appropriation. Only Pegasi can walk on clouds, but how do structures and furniture work? Maybe it's okay if a Pegasus crafts it or touches it first? Why doesn't Cloudsdale build a floor or boardwalk of some kind? Do they just hate non-wingies that much? Theme. Twilight makes these fillies and colts line up to receive a book when more advanced technology, like a table, would suffice. What a nice playground. It would be a shame if it were caught in a quantum superposition of existing and not existing at the same time. Applebloom explains the journal is making them popular and she wants to start a Cutie Mark summer camp to help others. Twilight's reaction is strangely negative. Maybe she's just jealous Applebloom has more followers on TikTok? Twilight trolls these fans by autographing random pages in the middle of the book. This guy grabs the book without using his horn at first. Twilight is quick to criticize Applebloom for enjoying the attention the book brings, but she herself will hide behind a bush to eavesdrop on ponies talking about it. It was a cop-out to skip over Twilight's lesson in the beginning, but cutting away just before Starlight annihilates these two is the ultimate cliffhanger. Twilight's nod is definitely royal approval for a public execution. Tell us again about when you met Dewey Doo! You mean that fictional character written by A.K. Yearling is actually a real pony? Somehow this earth-shattering revelation about a character that has her own convention isn't what the whole episode is about?
Gee, I wonder what A.K. Yearling thinks about all this. We want to know why Fluttish I keeps learning the same thing over and over again. Be assertive already! This surface-level criticism contrasts pretty well with the reality of Fluttershy lacking assertiveness while alone, but standing up for herself once friends arrive. The sin is for surface-level criticism kind of being the whole thing here, both in the episode and right here. Unicorns grabbing ponies with magic still isn't legally classified as assault. Or maybe Starlight's just immune because no prison could contain her. Every pony in Equestria is missing the friendship part of the friendship journals. Twilight generalizes the entirety of Equestria because she encountered 15 rude ponies today, and most of those were children and locals. I suddenly understood why I've been getting cancellations for days! You merely adopted the cancel culture. Rarity was born in it, molded by it. I need a hundred blankets, and I need them now! Right away, pony who still likes me! Applejack liking Rarity is still more canon than Apple Dash. Go ahead, I'll stay here. Starlight knows the difference between a hard work kind of problem and a bowl of ice cream kind of problem when she sees it. I wish we'd never released that journal. Since the journal is a not so subtle analogy for the show itself, the weight behind Twilight's statement is the show's true shark jumping moment. Starlight slams the doors with enough force to break wood, and possibly some background pony legs too. Joke, needing to be funny to be funny is a perpetual loop of unfunny. I can't even go to the bathroom without some pony trying to tell me how cool I am. Ponies use bathrooms, confirmed. Rest in peace, Lauren Faust's original vision. Guy who shares Twilight's cutie mark is actually Team Pinkie Pie. That's a sin on behalf of an unfair universe. I moved here to learn about friendship. Twilight moved here because she was tricked into supervising an event and later convinced to stay despite her hesitance to make friends. You know, pretty much the opposite of what she's claiming now. Each of these ponies standing next to me. Twilight is very careful with her words to exclude the non-standing brash blue Pegasus. Leave it to the in-universe best pony arguments to cause division and strife when in reality, fighting over who is best pony is humanity at its most productive and harmonious. Speaking of best pony, this episode lacks realism, because we all know Derpy should have the most fans. This is a good moment to bring up the fact that this episode aired live during BronyCon. There's no way they could have planned it, but this of all episodes just happening to air at that time is truly sinful. If one good thing came from this episode, it's confirmation of what we've known all along, that fictional ponies are actually real. We are real ponies. She's even funnier in real life. This journal is a record of things that actually happened to us. Come on, you don't want to disappoint your fans. I, I don't even know what this is. That's a book, darling. <laughs> I'm going after her. Go ahead. I'm gonna have a chat with these two.